Welcome to Sunshine Cathedral's Queer God Squad. It's Friday, May 3rd, 2024. I am Rev. Dr. Darrell Watkins, the Senior Minister here at Sunshine Cathedral. I am Rev. Dr. Robert Griffin, the Executive Minister. Faith and religion can be complicated for the LGBTQ community. Surveys show that evangelical faith is the justification for the greatest attacks on the LGBTQ community. I am Rev. Kevin Tisdall, the Minister of Education. The Queer God Squad is going to explore our religious community. Let's explore the big news of the day and what it means to you. I am Rev. Dr. Ann Atwell, the Minister of Connections. This is live and then we are available on demand. We're available on all smart televisions and your favorite social media. Sunshine Cathedral, we are here to tell you that you are God's miracle, not God's mistake. This is the Sunshine Cathedral Perspective. Unique religious issues when older people come out with children, wives, and family. In a recent discussion on Reddit's subreddit, Ask A Bros, a thought-provoking question surfaced, sparking a dialogue on the complexities of sexual discovery and identity. The user inquired about people who came to a realization about their sexuality later in life when they're married with kids, perhaps adult children, and the original poster expressed a curiosity over why it took so long. The question delves into the deeply personal aspect of human experience, shedding light on the diverse paths individuals transverse in understanding their sexual orientation. The responses within the Reddit thread reflected a spectrum of perspectives, highlighting the nuanced interplay of societal expectations, personal introspection, and external influences. Understanding one's sexuality is deeply personal and multifaceted, influenced by many factors. It's a journey marked by introspection, societal norms, and individual circumstances. But does coming out later in life have more effect on family, friends, work, and other relationships? Comments also focused on how it affected their affiliation with their longstanding church and how older, even seniors, deal with God, the Bible, their church, and being older and LGBTQ+. Some may take longer to realize their truth due to societal pressures, while others have a clearer understanding from a young age. Each journey is valid and deserves compassion. Queer God Squad encourages individuals to embrace their authentic selves, fostering a community of acceptance, understanding, and support for all who embark on the path of self-discovery. You know, somebody a number of years ago, somebody who was very wise, shared with me, I don't know what it's like to be anybody but me. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone has their own coming out story. Um, everyone has their own journey. And it can be difficult to determine what your sexuality is, um, but that is part of the journey, um, yes. coming out to others. And I appreciate that. I get that. Um, our society has expectations that they want us to conform to, yeah. that we feel compelled to conform to. Um, what is normal sexual behavior? Who knows? Um, the advice I can give is do what is best for you. Um, try not to hurt other people, mm-hmm. but ultimately do what is best for you. Um, however you define your sexuality, know that it is a sacred gift. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, and it's... Um... It's complicated mm-hmm. yeah. because you're told you're meant to do a certain thing. Right. And, but inside, you know, that's not who you are. You feel like that's not who you are. And yet you're told it's who you're supposed to be. And so you conform to that, mm-hmm. thinking you're doing a good thing. Eventually, maybe you can't do that anymore. And you right. come up, but now you've got a husband or a wife or kids or, mm-hmm. and they have to relearn who you are. They have to readjust how they relate to you. Often, not always, but often the marriage has to has to end. It certainly has to recalibrate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and so that's a lot. But that wasn't your fault that you were told to do a thing right, that, right. that you that you weren't built to do. Uh, and so so there's that. So I mean, don't I, I wouldn't feel too. Yes, you hate that you've disappointed or hurt people. But you're hurt also, mm-hmm. and True. everyone's hurt because of the systems and the religions and the families and the mm-hmm. the pressures that said this is you know. But, and I knew I grew up. There would always be some super flaming 
florist, hairdresser, you know, whatever. The, 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 it's a waiter. I mean, you know, the, 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 the stereotypes, they're often based on things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they would be clearly, and they'd have this wife and this kid or two. And I'm like, yeah. and, they, and the wife didn't seem to know. I'm like, are you, do you, are, are you, are you sighted? Can you hear? I mean, I was saying how you can not know, but, and they just lived that way because yeah. they thought they had to. Sometimes the man would play around, sometimes not. Right. Mm-hmm. But there was never, what I never saw in those families were joy yeah. and trust and fun and lightheartedness. So, and then later, Christy, this was back in the, you know, the 70s, later by the 80s or 90s, you saw more and more people mm-hmm. coming out yeah. and saying, and sometimes the, the spouse would be the best friend or sometimes they'd keep it together some kind of way or have an open relationship or have a bitter breakup. It would go all kinds of ways. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to do about that. I don't know, I don't know how to work people through that. Uh, other than just try to love everyone uh, mm-hmm. uh, until they get to where they need to be. But I do have a resource. There is a book, and this is from the 90s, but it's, I still think it was, I, I handed this out a lot in the 90s, and I still think it's probably a good uh, resource. It's called The Other Side of the Closet. Mm. And it's by Amity Pierce Buxton. Amity Pierce Buxton, The Other Side of the Closet. And that is for the people that you come out to. Mm-hmm. The wife, the husband, the kids, the grandkids, uh, because they've got a journey too now. Mm-hmm. And just like you didn't ask me who you are, and you didn't ask society to make you do a certain thing, they didn't ask. They thought they had the real deal too. So everyone's upset by the homophobia that caused the situation, that caused you to even do something that would that it wasn't yours to do. But um, but there are resources for them, mm-hmm. and so and this is one to start with. Uh, the other side of the closet. Cool. Yeah, I think wherever you're on the spectrum, uh, mm-hmm. I just want to echo something that uh, Dr. Atwell say. No, just be, I would say, be be, be gentle with yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. In that process, because you're awakening something that has been dormant for a while, and you know maybe you have ways that you act on before, but just be gentle with yourself because you love for who you are, not who you're not. Right. And and I think as you embrace that and and make that transition, it becomes a healthy, wholesome thing for everyone. And if there are wives and children involved, they're going to be on their own journey as well. Right. And yes. so you know, I remember this one wedding where uh, the ex-wife became best friend with the future husband and it was her who helped plan the wedding for both of them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's like those kind of stories also. So it's kind of unique how how things happen and things respond. So it's magical. Your husband doesn't remember that one. Well, I do remember it, except oh. I thought it was our wedding. That where <laughs> where <laughs> I wasn't making it. <laughs> wow. Okay. Th- the things you learn, right? You yeah, learn. I'm, I'm watching your face, and I'm like, "What happened just then?" Where? Yeah, this was somebody back in Maryland. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, no, my ex-wife and my husband uh, got together and worked out my divorce from the ex-wife so that we could get married. And uh, that's another whole. Segment. Oh, that's a whole <laughs> that's other a, story. That's a weird Next news week thing. on the Queer God Squad. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other topic. Yeah. Of people so, yeah. This, this. Yeah. I, I. My wife was a lesbian, and um, and we knew it. We had a good time. We, it was just whatever. Uh, but she, <laughs> but we forgot to end it. And so when it was time oh. to get married again, we had to. But I'm uh, I to hate, be continued. I hate. Wow. I hate a lot of detailed stuff. I hate chores. I he pays the bill. So anyway, he worked out with her. They became very good buddies, and you know whatever. So um, so yeah, I thought I thought you were giving a a, a spin on that. Oh, I, I was talking about I, my past trip back in Maryland in my early days. <laughs> <laughs> And then it got uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> Let me see. If I can... Now, now you learn a little something about me. <laughs> Let me see if I can remember what I was going to say. I have a person that I know who is in his sixties. He's been gay for most of his adult life. He has been married to a woman for most of his adult life. And he truly believes that no one in his family knows that um, <laughs> he's gay. So there's that side of it. And in conversations with him, we find that he just doesn't know how to do it. He hasn't found the the wherewithal to make that leap. And I'm like, I would guess that if your spouse doesn't know, your inner circle does know. Yeah. So you have to find a place where you feel safe. And because he has yet to find that place, he is still living that double life. It's his, whatever you want to call it, to bear. And I just 
stand with him and say to him that when you are ready, you're going to do it. So to be 50 plus and finally come out, I don't know that it's that unusual for my generation. Mm. I right. think yeah, that it it's yeah. a little less usual for people who were he born earlier. Um, mm. Yeah. So it, it's not yeah. just. Um, not just the church yeah. that, that steps on, on people. It's the way you were grown up. Um, out, you, you can be an atheist and still be afraid to tell your best friend that you're queer. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got to give some compassion to them. We've got to give them as much space as they can mm -hmm. need and to always let them know that they're not alone, mm -hmm. that there's somebody, someone, somewhere that's going to hold their hand and tell them, I understand what you're going through, and whenever you want to talk, I'm there for you. You know, it's 2024, and the DL syndrome is still alive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Still yeah. going with, and what, when, I, when, when you're talking, that's what comes to mind. It's like, you know, I remember when we first started talking about people who were on the DL, mm -hmm. the down low, mm -hmm. and I think that kind of fed into a whole lot of things around HIV and AIDS, and it's all another clause yeah. of level around uh, religious stuff, but also marriage, people who like just very comfortable. It's like, you know, what do you do with that? So I think there's room for compassion, still growth uh, for folks who are still having to live with that. Yeah. Yep. And I, and I, I wouldn't, I would try not to be jealous of those people who came out because I used to be. I came out at 19, mm. and but I'd had a really difficult high school experience. Uh, first of all, being sort of like, oh, look how different he is, and you know, so the the officer, and then to overcome that, just becoming basically a clown, uh, sexually acting out, drugs, just everything to overcome that, and so that which was not healthy, right. and then. Um, so in my freshman year of college, and I'm 19, um, is when I finally came out, and that's when that's when I honestly feel like my life began. Yeah, mm -hmm. like everything before 19 is kind of a blur still, because because it was I was just trying to get by, just trying to survive, trying to hide, yeah. or trying to disguise. And so when I started seeing people coming out 14, 15, 16, I'm like, oh my god, if I had really known who I was and could have yeah. featured it like I did in college, yeah. mm -hmm. my high school experience would have been so different. And uh, so. But I came out when I came out. Yeah. You know, I was in an isolated area. I was in a rural Bible Belt area. It was it was the mid eighties. I did what I could do. Yeah, right. And I do. think that's what yep. every you do what you can do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thank goodness for the moment it happened. And uh, so try not to be jealous of, of those who, who did it earlier. Because of the lives we've lived, they could do it a yeah. bit earlier. So uh, it's all it's all part of the mix. Don't know what it's like to be anybody but me. Yeah. Well, that's today with the Queer God Squad. We want to thank you for joining us. We're here daily at 3 p.m. to have some fun and to discuss what our LGBTQ plus community is talking about. Sunshine Cathedral is the world's largest progressive queer church. Progressive queer and God are words that naturally should go together. And we are all in this together. Remember that you are God's miracle, not God's mistake. Until next time, we are the Queer God Squad. Goodbye.